Hi everyone, my name is Veronica Montoya. I'm with the SASE department at CSU Channel Islands. We're the Student Academic Success and Equity Initiatives Department. Um, today we're going to be talking a little bit about transfer students and joining me are Alan and Julie, but I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Maybe Alan, could you start with just your name and your major at CSUCI? Sure, um, my name's Alan Faust and I'm a chemistry major at CSUCI. Julie? Hi everyone, my name is Julie and I am a sociology major at CSUCI. Awesome. Well, I'm really excited to be here with both of you. Um, so all of us have been transfer students in the past, and we just wanted to spend a few minutes to share with you a little bit about what our experiences have been like and hear a lot more from Alan and Julie about what it's been like for them coming to CSUCI and transferring in. Alan, maybe we'll start with you. Could you tell us a little bit about your family and how it is you ended up at CSUCI? Sure. My family, um, both my parents graduated college and even pursued PhDs, so it was always expected that I would go to college, but my path to CI has not been straightforward. I graduated high school and didn't get into any colleges I wanted, so I went to a community college for two years and then decided to transfer to a four-year college. I ended up transferring to Berkeley, UC Berkeley, not doing well there, failing out after two years, going back to community college, taking a year off, taking a gap year, and finally deciding to transferred to CSUCI just last year. Julie, tell us a little bit about your family and how you ended up at CSUCI. So both of my parents immigrated from Mexico to the United States. And so growing up, I was always told as a little girl, I was raised with this mentality that I would need to go to college and that I would have to sacrifice and work hard to get there. So I've been actually doing all that. In high school, I did apply to some universities, although I did get accepted. I couldn't go to straight to university because I did not know what I wanted to major in and I didn't have the financial aid to be able to pay for school. So instead I attended Oxford College where I took classes and I uh, was able to transfer just last year also to South State Channel Islands. Well, I'm glad both of you are here at CSCCI. Um, coming back to you a little bit, Alan, I'm not sure that I've ever mentioned to you, but I also kind of have a, had a very similar path. I started off at uh, USC. And then after a year and a half, had to go back home to community college and was there at Hartnell before I transferred to San Diego State. I will say it was a, I ended up at the best school for me and it was a great experience. But I'd like to hear a little bit more about you. What was your experience like when you transferred? Um, the first time or the second time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Uh, My experience moving from community college to UC Berkeley it's a very rushed process in my head. I had applied to several colleges and as the applications come back, I kept getting to better and better and better colleges eventually ending on Berkeley. And so it was a very, I was also working during the summer. And so it was a very rushed, very, oh, you're just going to go do this and it's going to be fine. And don't worry about it. You'll worry about it when you get there. And so once I was there, I wasn't sure what to do. Um, I didn't really know the campus that well. I didn't have many connections because I spent all summer working at someplace completely separate and different and just felt really uncomfortable and isolated once I was there. And um, I never really got rid of that feeling, but it's been a very different process coming to CSUCI. And some of the things that I think helped with that was I explored the campus a lot more before I got here. I went in with the mentality with the, that experience behind me of I need to make connections on campus. I need to speak to my professors like they're people. I wanted to get into tutoring and learn like where the writing center was, where the research was, what was the library being used for, like that kind of stuff. Very things that I didn't do at my last school to kind of give me a solid connection and place to put my feet down and just like feel comfortable being on campus and studying. And that was important to me. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. I, I had the same feeling. I think when I started school, just feeling exactly what you described, isolated and then mm -hmm. kind of it never I never shook that feeling off, but a very different experience. Um, so the, the feeling yeah. like you didn't really belong there, like the, you, you were kind of in everybody's way, um, was very, very strong when I first moved to Berkeley. Um, and it was something I really didn't want to continue and, and have at um, Channel Islands. <laughs> and I don't. <laughs> oh, good. I, yeah, that's, I, I appreciate you sharing that. Julie, a little bit about what was it like for you about um, transferring? Sounds like you came over from Oxnard College. I will say it was scary at the beginning because I didn't know anyone 
for the people that I did know, I was quiet around. So it was a difficult process, I would say, especially being like as a first generation student, you don't know, you don't know what resources and tools you need in order to be able to like navigate through the educational system. So it was a bit scary me being um, doubtful whether you were taking like the right classes, whether you were doing the right major, and then also just learning how to navigate the environment because it, it is a new environment. And then since I was used to at Oxford College having everything and knowing where I needed to go for help or if I needed help from a professor, where to find it, at CI, I didn't know yet. And so it was a bit scary for me at the beginning. Did that change for you over time? Yes, it actually did. I was able to meet some friends that actually kind of helped me that were there before. So they kind of helped me navigate the resources and tools that I needed to in order to be successful. And then I also took a UNIV 350 class that we had digs in where one of, one of the mentors actually was there and kind of showed us around of where to find the resources. Well, I appreciate both of you sharing your experiences. For students that might still be in that process, because I think both of you might very clearly remember what it's like to be moving from one institution to another. You're in one school, you're about to make the jump to another school, uh, lots of decisions that need to be made. What is one tip that you would give to students before they transfer? What would you say is important for students to do before they actually transfer? And then what is one tip that you would give to students after they transfer? Knowing what you know about your own transfer experiences coming from your first school or from your community college over to university, what are some of the tips you've gleaned, you've learned over this time that would be important to students to know before they transfer and then what should they be doing immediately after they transfer? Um, we'll start with you, Alan. Is there anything that comes up for you? Before transfer, for me, it was very important to know the space that I was going into. And but the, the simplest way that I did that was come to the campus, preferably when classes are on, because sometimes that's hard, but you might be able to swing it if you have different schedules. But come to the campus when it's active. Be on it, feel the whole vibe. Where, where are people moving? Where are people going? Poke your head into, like, not literally poke your head into, but like walk by some classrooms. See what the campus is like, what the, what the flow is, and what the people are like. Talk to a few people just random people just strike up a conversation or something like that, walk into an office. Like it's very scary, but you're really serious about transferring. This is the place you're going to be at for at least a year, two years, maybe longer. <laughs> the, the, the analogy that I think of is just kick open that door. Like, like go in, like talk, talk to some people, drop in on random offices. Like it, it, it sounds, it sounds very scary, but it helps you get a feel for it and helps you feel like you belong there. Um, now that would be a, tip before transferring. Okay, hey, well, we'll jump over to Julie. What's one tip um, folks should do, students should do before they transfer? Once you have finally decided what school you are going to attend and you know what you're majoring in, I would definitely do some research on what classes and requirements that class needs just so that you can make sure you stay on track so that you're taking the right classes right from the beginning. Yeah, I've, I've heard that a lot from transfer students. How do you know if you're taking the right classes that you need. So I, yeah, that's that's incredibly important. I mean, especially since your physical being might be in one school, right, at your community college, and already you're registering for classes in, in your new school. And so it can there can be kind of a little bit of, of a gap, right, while you're making those decisions. But yeah, I, I appreciate that. How about after? What should they do after, Alan? Immediately after you transfer, you're at your new school, what, what should the students be doing? Start making connections. You may have noticed I'm a very people-oriented person, but talk, talk to professors, make connections, something to keep you grounded um, at the school. It's, it's, it seems very scary when you first get there to just start talking to people, but I know from experience that if you, it's the easiest time to do it is right, up, right after you transfer. Join a club, find a job, very helpful. <laughs> Peep department. <laughs> but find something um, besides just the classes and the um, academics that connects you to the campus because academics aren't always there. We're only in school for nine months out of the year and you want, you want, you want something else to, to bind you to the campus. But it is important to look up, your, you look up your class syllabus and stuff like that. Start reading your books. Any reading, any work you do now, you don't have to do during the semester. So that's always helpful even if it's just skimming chapter titles. So Alan, maybe just to build off a little bit about what you just said, making connections, what's one connection you think would be the first one they should go after if they could? Academic advisor. 
they are there to help you. They have dealt with transfer students before. They may have even dealt with transfer students from the community college you're talking about or you've, can't, you've come from. They know, they should know what classes you need to take. They should be able to tell you which classes you don't have to take anymore so you don't do any repeats. And that is a resource you will come back to over and over and over and will help you get to your degree and probably plugged into other resources. Because again, they deal with transfer students a lot. You're a transfer student, it's fine to ask for help from them. That was one of the mistakes I made. Ask for help with it. Like, and, and they know and, and they can they can really point you in the right direction. So find out who that is, find their office hours, go talk to them. How about you, Julie? What's something they should do immediately after they transfer? What suggestion would you have? Schooling-wise, my recommendation is if you are taking a class where you know you're going to have a lot of midterms or finals in, start finding, again, connections with people that you may want to form a study group in so that you can get ahead and start working on it earlier. Hey, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. It's true. Find out who, what other students, I mean, especially in your major classes, there's going to be a lot of the same folks that are in the classes with you again and again. So it wouldn't be surprising if you'll have a lot of the same people in your classes, even that one semester. What are some of the best ways to get involved? So now, um, now students are, now folks are in their new school. What are some of the best ways to get involved at school? Alan? Something that's common pretty much all four of your campuses is a student union building or room or something like that. And there may even be a specific area for transfer students. But often there'll be, especially at the beginning of the semester, there'll be club recruitments, there'll be um, short excursions for people to get to know each other, like even freshmen just coming in um, that want to be included, other transfer students. So tap your student union resources, whatever student government you have. And you don't have to join a club, but go to one of their get-togethers, go to one of their recruiting things, meet some people. It, it really helps you get a feel for the vibe on campus is the best way I can put it and uh, what type of people you want to get to know. How about you, Julie? What suggestions do you have or tips do you have for students about what's the best way to get involved? Another way is by doing like some research online. I know for a lot of websites for schools, they do have a clubs and organizations page where they have all the clubs and organizations and give like a little description of what each one does. Also, another way is speaking to some professors because I know some professors are the ones that are sort of helping and directing that's another way you could get involved by speaking to them and asking them as well. How about any any other tips um, that you would say looking back on on all of it? You're like, oh, I wish I had done this one thing differently. Anything you would suggest or offer to students? Alan, what do you think? Going off what Julie said, um, getting to know your professors um, as people rather than just the person at the front of the lecture. They are very well connected on campus usually and even outside of campus and can help you so so much and are often just great people <laughs> like it's it's a t it's a tough to get to get and they're usually passionate about whatever subject and if it's your major you should be at, at least a little as well and just let that come through <laughs> they love passionate students what about on your side julie what would you say one big tip for me would be even before school starts would be again getting your syllabus and start mapping it out so that you can know when you have finals when you have midterms <laughs> and giving yourself like those blockout dates so you could just focus on studying. And so, that's a really big one. So Julie, when you say map it out, what does that mean? So what I do for myself is I use a school planner and so I block out the dates where I have um, finals and midterms. And so I'll give myself, because I'm a slower learner, I'll give myself like a week to study for that week. And so I'll place that time specifically just for studying and I'll have time for like any recreational or other stuff. So it sounds like you block off even your study time on your calendar? Yes, I do. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, I appreciate all of the tips that you've had for us today. Um, looking back on your entire kind of combination of both community college and, and now your four-year experience, um, what's been a highlight for you personally and academically? What's been that one thing or what, looking back on it all, what What's been a highlight or kind of something that you've really appreciated about your own trajectory? I'd say, yeah, so it, like even for me personally, it took me nine years to graduate. And there have been often times where I'm like, would I go back and do nine years again? And, mo and I would say, yes, I, I don't know that I would change any of it because it was a great ride. What would you both say from your own experiences? Um, what's been a highlight of your undergraduate years? Julie, maybe we'll start with you. I would say... Definitely meeting new people and getting their perspectives on things because I know school is important, but you also need to build connections and build friendships 
And that's what I've been able to do. I've been able to build friendships with people specifically in the PEEP program that have completely helped me and supported me. I've been able to build and create like a support system and a family system where I feel comfortable in. I would say pretty much the same thing. Um, college is such a such a good opportunity to meet people that I never, ever would have met otherwise. Like I had a roommate in Berkeley who was transfer student from mainland China <laughs> and we talked about all sorts of stuff that was fun he brought Japanese exchange students over and I'm meeting so many new people through this and really good people like um, college is one of those places like yeah it's, it's hard and it's difficult but that allows the good to kind of rise to the top for for most people and it's, it's such a valuable resource just outside of academics that overall has just been wonderful is meeting the people Well, I appreciate both of you taking time out today to join us. I just want to be sure to mention that both Alan and Julie are part of our PEEP program. As peer mentors, they're in the Peer Education Equity Program here at CSUCI. Um, And we'll be including more information on PEEPs in the links attached to this video. So stay on the lookout for some of our peer mentor work at CSUCI. We have an amazing troop of CSUCI peer mentors that are in courses and just on, on campus and going out. And they also go out into the community. So we'll have more information for you all on the P program if you wanted to hear more about it. But again, thanks to Alan. Thanks to Julie for joining us today and for your awesome experiences and being willing to share those with us today. We'll probably come back to you all hopefully with some more videos pretty soon, but we'll stop here and say thanks all for joining us.